Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and this is our son. In today's video, we're going to be talking about another star that may have actually coexisted with our own son that we're going to refer to as Nemesis. Why? Well, you'll find out in a few minutes. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. Alright, we're not really talking about the conspiracy theory of a star that is somewhere on the outskirts of our solar system that sends comets toward our planet Earth and destroys life every 27 million years. This is actually what Nemesis was originally known as, the so-called evil twin of our sun that is basically responsible for causing a lot of destruction on our planet Earth that we're going to actually pl place here as well because... This feels a little bit lonely without it. So let's place Earth where it should be. So, the the so-called conspiracy theory of Nemesis is that there is actually a, um, a star on the outskirts that basically causes our Earth to experience a lot of interesting cometary collisions uh, periodically, specifically the period here that scientists refer to was 27 million years, until more recently we discovered that this was actually not true and there is no periodicity. Uh, the comets do collide with our planet, and asteroids do as well, but it's very, 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 very random. So Nemesis is probably something that doesn't exist, but it may have existed long time ago, and this is what this video is about. So this is actually based on a study from the University of California, Berkeley, and uh, specifically here there's a, a co-author by the name of Steven Stalver that talks about how our son actually did have a twin, very likely, like very, 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 very likely. And this twin he refers to as Nemesis because, well, why not? We already na had a name for a twin of, of our son. So he refers to as the uh, to the star as um, a twin that escaped our son a long time ago. And he has a really good reason for saying so. So what he suggests is that it was basically something that looked like this. So it was a system with two stars, and we're going to make them actually binary stars, uh, with a distance between them that's probably something that's kind of far, over 60 astronomical units away. And this is um, billions of years ago, specifically like 4.6 maybe billions of years ago, uh, when our sun was only forming. And one of the reasons why he's saying this, and he thinks that there was a, a twin, is because if you actually look at our closest companion, our closest neighbor that actually does look and feel a lot, a lot like our son, specifically we're talking about Alpha Centauri here, Alpha Centauri A and Alpha Centauri B are very sun-like. They're very, very sun-like. And they're together. It's a binary system. Here's Alpha Centauri B. Here's Alpha Centauri A. They're actually orbiting around one another um, at a relatively comfortable distance. And uh, they're both sun-like. They're actually orange main sequence stars. Uh, and this one is actually a yellow main sequence star. Uh, and uh, the larger one is a G-type, similar to our sun. And the smaller one is a K-type, slightly smaller than our sun. And then uh, what the, the scientists did, actually what, it was several scientists whose names, I, unfortunately, I don't really know, but uh, they basically looked at this uh, region of space known as the Perseus molecular cloud, which is about 600 light years away from us, and that's where a lot of new stars are made. And they looked at all of the new stars, and what they discovered uh, was that there was, there was a lot of binary stars, so a lot of binary stars, multi-stars even, not just binary. And um, something like 55 young stars were in, in binary systems, and then 45 uh, older stars were by themselves. And here we're talking about a star separation of at least uh, 500 astronomical units. So let me just show you what this means. And actually just to help you visualize this a little bit better. So when a young star forms, and we're just going to use our sun again, um, it seems to almost always have a partner. They're almost always together. It's binary or even uh, trinary or tertiary systems. But if these two stars are close together, they will very likely come even closer and may even uh, combine into a larger star creating a supernova or just a larger star in general. But most of these stars, 
that start relatively close to one another, they basically just move a little bit closer and then maintain their radius maintain their orbital radius to this. So they basically start orbiting a little bit differently, kind of like what uh, Alpha Centauri A and Alpha Centauri B do. And so they basically stay as binary stars. And then there are other types of stars, similar to our sun, and this is, uh, according to them, like 60% of stars out there, that do star as binary systems as well, but they're actually farther away from each other, much, much farther away. And even though they start as binary systems, over millions of years, they drift farther apart and eventually they go on their merry way separately. So here they basically do the opposite. They drift away until their gravity is no longer strong enough to support each other gravitationally. And they basically kind of just disappear. And in this simulation here, we have this nemesis and the sun. And so basically over millions of years, they will... Uh, drift farther and farther apart until their gravity uh, no longer influences each other and until they basically kind of get influenced by something else um, outside of their gravitational pool and until they basically escape each other. So here at a distance of about 10,000 astronomical units, that's when you start feeling the gravitational pull from other objects. So they no longer are together or are they? And just to make this more realistic, let's place some other stars just so that we actually get that gravitational influence from other objects. And so here, Nemesis will most likely disappear from Sun's influence. And there we go. Did it? No, they're still orbiting. Wow, this has been really stubborn. Anyway, so that's the idea here. And the idea is actually very brilliant. And they used a lot of statistical models. There you go. There is Nemesis by itself, as it probably happened. It probably escaped taking its own planets with it and disappeared into the abyss of our galaxy. So somewhere out there, there is actually our twin star with possibly even its own planetary systems, its own beautiful habitable planets like Earth, but the opposite of Earth, which would be anti-Earth. Not sure. Not sure what to call it. But we don't really know where it is anymore because this was so many billions of years ago. So um, the uh, the speculation here is actually based on scientific statistical analysis, and it's actually quite accurate. So honestly, for all we know, there's definitely a star that used to be part of our system, and for all we know, maybe it's even the star that we are currently looking at into the uh, in the night sky, and we can actually see. We just don't know which one it is. We need to find a star that's about the same age as our sun and has a uh, practically uh, identical composition. But the important part of, of this uh, study is that we now are almost certain that pretty much every star starts in a multi-planetary, or sorry, not multi-planetary, but multi-star systems. Almost no star out there is born by itself. It always starts as a binary or even more like tertiary or quart quaternary systems with three, four, five stars. And through interaction, they then either become more closely related or separated and fly away by themselves. So it's a pretty cool study, pretty good discovery, and gives you a really interesting new thing to think about. So somewhere out there is our twin with potentially even similar planets to our sun. We just have to find it. Maybe one day we will. Anyway. That's all I wanted to do in this video, and if you've enjoyed it, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who enjoys watching space stuff and wants to learn through video games. Let's do some explosioning before we end this video. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else, something you may have not known, something educational. Space out, and as always, bye-bye. Here come the explosions.